Well, good morning, sisters and brothers at St. Matthew's. As many of you know, the Vestry met on Tuesday night to discuss a great many things. It was a long three-hour meeting. Uh, but one of the things, the main thing we discussed was the reconsideration of the name of the Ruffin House. In particular, we discussed uh, how to approach that reconsideration with the whole parish, with you, with you all. And before I talk a little bit about that, I do want to say that every member of that vestry deserves the thanks and the support of the members of this parish. Uh, they are doing an amazing amount of work through this pandemic and through this need to reconsider the name of the Ruffin House. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are unstinting in their service to you all. And, uh, I thank them, and each of us owes them a debt of thanks. Um, so thank you, Vestry, women and men, for your work and your ministry in this place. On Sunday, at the Sunday Forum, I'm going to share the outcome of that Vestry meeting. Again, the outcome is not whether or not we will rename the Ruffin House, uh, but it is how we are going to engage the parish in a parish-wide process around this consideration. And the best thing to come out of the vestry meeting was the realization that we're not just in the business of making a binary decision that either we change the name or we don't, but rather we're involved in something so much more deep and, 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 and nurturing and challenging uh, as a vestry and as an entire parish community. And this, uh, this opening of that vision is perhaps the most exciting thing for me to come out of that meeting, or you might say the clarity around this mission uh, is the most exciting thing for me. Once we make it a binary decision about whether we'll do this or do that, and yes or no, and winners and losers, uh, it all becomes very defensive and kind of hostile, and the arguments are, 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 uh, are brought up and supported and so forth. But really what we have uh, here uh, is a deep, deep care for the life of God in the parish and God's ministry in this place, among us, between us, and out in Hillsborough in Orange and Durham counties. Um, this is the real deep care that we are called to this Christian mission. As I sit here in, in the Ruffin House and on this beautiful property of land, I can look out my windows and just be so grateful that we have this land, these trees. I can be so grateful uh, to Brooks and the parish for this vision of the Ruffin House in which I sit, which is so amazing, such an amazing building. And as I look further back, I'm also aware of the profound wrong, I mean the unspeakable wrong and the cruelty and the indignity and the hurt that was inflicted on other human beings because of the color of their skin. And, of course, I'm speaking about slavery. And I'm also aware of how the wealth that created this parish came out of that practice and came out of the practice, in particular, of selling slave families, even breaking apart slave families to sell different members from this part of the South to more Southern parts of the South. Uh, this, is, this is part of our parish history and it's where our parish wealth and endowment started. And 
some of the reaction to that can be, well, that's not my business. Um, people can say that they didn't condone slavery, that uh, they were not alive at that time, or their parents weren't here, or this isn't their original community. And boy, I sure can say that too. Um, not only am I a northerner uh, from Wisconsin, uh, my last place I lived before England was Madison, Wisconsin. Um, but my father was also Austrian, and my family's business, which had, uh, which had uh, grown for years in an outskirts uh, of Vienna, in, outs in the outskirts of Vienna, uh, that family business and house had been bombed by Americans <laughs> in World War II. My mother came from Ohio, uh, which had its own difficulties with race, to be sure. But I grew up as a suburban child up in the north. Yeah. But I think there's, there's two things I'd like us to look at with this. Um, one thing is, as we're aware that our, our parish was founded you know, in a time of slavery and by those who practiced slavery, um, well, we see right before us the possibility of what the Hebrews called a double heart. A double heart that you can go to worship on Sunday and entirely miss because of cultural upbringing and other forces miss the significance of the cruelty that you are doing to other human beings or to other creatures on this planet. And that's a pretty hard thing to face. And we all have this possibility of a double heart. That we can be honest and earnest Christians, doing our best, and yet completely blind to how we might be inflicting real harm, real harm on other others in this world. That's one thing to keep in mind. And the other thing I think is that our Christian mission uh, doesn't happen uh, uh, in avoidance of our history, but in our Christian mission to be God's people uh, is, well, it comes through our history. It comes through our rootedness in this place. And so part of my calling here to be your pastor and your priest and to work with you in the mission of Jesus in this place doesn't mean that I just start with 2019 and go forward, but it means that I yield myself and give myself to the entire history of this place and wonder about how God's work of reconciling love, of conciliating love, healing, growth and transformation can come about because of the entire history of this place. And this is where it begins to get a little exciting for me. Because that history is, in a way, it's shameful, you know? And, and many of us don't want to have that shame or guilt put on us, and that's understandable. But if we just step aside from the shame, I mean, that, that hurt is very real. You know, it goes back in our past. And uh, I think that one of the outcomes of sitting with that reality is that it breaks open our hearts in compassion to this world today. It breaks open that wall in our hearts that keeps our hearts divided from our faith in God and how we are with other people. It breaks that down so that we begin to have a new vision of how our faith and our lives of prayer, and our lives of deep centering in the Spirit and in Jesus, and our love for creativity and engagement, how all that is connected to how we are with others in this world, and how we are with communities outside of this one, how we relate to Hillsborough, and how we relate to, to the, the, the black community in Orange County, how we relate, relate to the Latino community in Durham and Orange Counties. 
What's our relationship with the communities around us? Our hearts are broken open by this kind of reckoning with our past to be more deeply human and more capable of living with God's life now. And that is the really exciting thing for me about this work and, and about our history and about the leadership of this parish, the lay leadership, which is so strong and so good and really deeply wrestling with these things. I, uh, I don't know quite where God is going to take us. Oh, brothers, oh, sisters, I don't know where we're going to end with this. But I do know that as our hearts are opened in compassion, in new sensitivity, in new care, new things will happen and we will be taken to places of new life. You know, I, I uh, speaking of new life, I, I, had a, I had the gift and honor of offering therapy, therapeutic counseling when I, during my time in England. And, and I witnessed over and over again people coming in with some intractable, intractable pain in their lives. And it just seemed like nothing could be done with this hurt that had risen up anew for them. And as we sat with it and gave ourselves to it and really accepted it deeply, hope emerged, agency emerged, personal power for the client emerged, and they discovered a new way to be alive which integrated all of their past and allowed them to step more confidently, more powerfully, more creatively into their future. And that is a very close analogy to the work we are engaged in as a parish. It's right in the middle of our Christian life and of God being with us and God making us new. And God, because he loves us, because God loves us, he won't leave us alone. He's going to make this work. Press on us to do this work with us because he loves us. And he loves every human being. God bless us on this journey. I'll see you on Sunday. And I uh, look forward to talking more about where we're going, more specifics about where we're going with this consideration of the Ruffin House name. God bless you. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.